You're listening to the Packernet Podcast Network. Getting engaged is a moment worth cherishing. A one-of-a-kind ring that you design at Blue Nile can help your love sparkle. Just choose your diamond and setting. When you've found the one, you'll get it delivered right to your door. Finding the right engagement ring can be nerve-wracking. At Blue Nile, you'll have the expert guidance needed and a diamond guarantee that ensures you're getting the highest quality at the best price. Cherish all of life's moments and save up to 30% at BlueNile.com. That's BlueNile.com. This episode is brought to you by Hyperice, the leader in advanced warm-up and recovery technology. They have tons of innovative products, like Venom-heated wearables to help soothe sore back muscles, Normatec compression boots to speed up recovery and increase circulation, and Hypervolt massage guns to improve mobility. Loved by athletes like Naomi Osaka and Erling Holland. Try them yourself. Get 10% off your order with the code MOVE at hyperrice.com. You, you feel this, this nervousness on the phone there? Sir, I've been trying to make an urgent phone call up there. I don't think it's something I want to do on an overseas phone. You got to make some phone calls. Hang up the phone. Prank caller. Prank caller. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to Packernet After Dark. This is the call-in show of the Packernet Podcast Network. If you'd like to call in, if you'd like to participate in the show, please feel free to do so. The phone number here is 608-501-0718. New callers go directly to the front of the line. We've got several new callers today, which I'm very excited about. So why don't we go ahead and get started with the new callers? What's going on, new callers? Whoa, Pack Daddy, Mamba Lamb. Whoa, Pack Daddy, Mamba Lamb. Hey, brother. That's um Ram Jam. Dude, I I hope you don't tell me your name because I want to call you Ram Jam so bad. I don't know if I envy you or I would not want to be you, but after this game, I mean, where do you even start, brother? Dude, I that that's if you listen to the podcast that I did, or pretty much every Monday, that's how I am every time. Like I, I feel bad because it, it should be the best episode, but it's it's so hard because it's like there's there's such a massive amount of data and I don't know any of it, and I'm trying to gather it and it's like oh there's a stat there's a stat oh my there's a, and it's just it there's just too much, and I can't figure out how to grab it all and bring it back in and stitch it together into a coherent thing. And I, I it, it's, so it's, I don't know where to start is the answer to the question. I'm telling you, uh, I, well, well, I was starting right from the last time, I say last time, so it probably happened again, but the last time the Packers went into, uh, went into the, you know, the, the hometown crowd at Lions Stadium, I, I mean, and wiped them up, I could just see. I could just see in my mind the Lions fans, the Viking fans, Bears already know, but Lions and Vikings fans just like getting this vision of, you know, remember like Friday the 13th when you know, Jason comes up out of that swamp? It's like I see Jordan Love. And <laughs> <laughs> they look down into the water and they see that face. And they're here, they're all here. And after we cream, cream the Lions, and then of course we do to the Vikings as well, but it's like, go, go, go. I mean, we're back. We're back already. Already. No delay. It's like from one to the next, the fearsome team and and more fearsome than, frankly, I think we've been in years. I mean, I'm I'm 64 years old. I've been watching this team for a long time. And um, it's just delightful. (laughs) <laughs> delightful brother uh, we were sitting around the house tonight and I got people here and we're drinking you know lots of different spirits we're having some chili we're having some nachos I, I, I was on the verge of making chili so I, I got I, let me let me tell you a quick story here so I bought a Dutch oven for the first time because there's all these recipes that look amazing and I remember like grandma always has she had like the more flimsy like black one you know like speckled with the white I don't know what you call that, but it's a much lighter thing. It's got the lid on it. And it's like, man, the food that comes out of there is so good, I want one. So I, I ended up getting a Dutch oven. I got the enameled one because I felt lazy and I got enough cast iron. Anyways, I go to this online repository where you can buy meat. I would tell you what it is, but they don't sponsor the show, and I emailed them and they didn't respond, so forget it. And it's one of these things where like they'll, they'll 
deliver it. Not them particularly, but they have a service. So I think, here's what I think happened. I got a bunch of orders that came late because of the stupid snowstorm, but this, is, this was the magic. I got an email saying, hey, we had to cancel your order, but we'll, we'll be back tomorrow. All right, dope. Next day comes around, it's like six o'clock at night. And I'm like, bro, what happened to my meat? I thought it was coming. Send him an email. I was like, is it still coming today? And she's like, oh, uh, well, two options. We can refund you or we'll have one out tomorrow morning. It's like freaking, all right, whatever. Because it'll be Sunday morning. I'll still make it work. You know, we got a quick thought. I'll throw it in the old sous vide tub, circulate some ice water, and we'll get it cooked up. That night, my wife messages me and says, hey, there's a package here. I was like, oh, it's supposed to come tomorrow. It was my huge, it was this bag of meat. I was like, all right, well, whatever. We got it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have this stuff out. We're going to thaw it. Da-da-da-da-da-da-bang-da-bang-da-bang. So I had, um, I got a beef roast. I got beef short ribs. I got ground beef for chili. This is why I, the story doesn't super pertain. I just, I, I wanted to tell you this. And then I got um, beef stew meat. Next morning, my wife says, hey, your package is here. And I thought it was this shovel, this electric shovel that I got. I was like, finally, that thing's been, it's supposed to be overnight. It's been in like six days. And she brings downstairs a giant bag of meat. She thought I'd had a second order. I was like, nope. So here's what happened. I'm pretty sure. Somebody picked up the order. They couldn't make it because of the snow. They told this company and they canceled it, but you can't bring the food back. The next day, the person that had my order delivered it. And then the company, honoring their commitment, sent out the new food. So I got double. I got double meat. Now, was the first person supposed to bring that old food out? I don't know, but it's cold outside and they package it with ice. It's probably fine. (laughs) Not worried about it. Uh, But I wanted to make chili, and I'm going to make chili. First time ever making it. I'm going to do it. It's going to be great. I'm very tempted to put noodles in it, because that's how I like it. But then I know it's technically not chili anymore. So that makes me sad, because I want to make actual chili. But since I got two orders, we'll do chili, and then we'll do the, the goulash, goulash, whatever it's called thing. Anyways, I apologize. Chili sounds delicious. Please continue. Bring the queso, bring the queso in the chili, which is delicious, by the way. Right, um, and um, it, it, we're just a party. The, the Packer pom poms from Lambeau Field. Yeah. The girls are waving those around, yep. and uh, you know everybody from my wife to my friends to my nieces and nephews. We're just—I mean, it's just—it's just wonderful. It's just wonderful, brother. And and I, then I sit here and I watch uh, L.A. play Detroit, and it's like, well, that's nice. I'm good for them. Yeah, but right. It, it, it's like not even the same league. No, man. it's not. It, it, it's not. I will say there was a point in time where I was watching L.A. play. Like I wasn't even scared of the Rams necess- or the, uh, the the Lions necessarily. I watched the Rams, and I saw some of the passes from Stafford and and some of the stuff they're doing. I was like, eh, they're looking pretty good. And then the Lions won. And I was like, well, well I guess we'll never know. <laughs> I don't have to worry about that, I guess. It's the same quality of play. No, it's not. It's not even close, frankly. And I thought, you know, I honestly did think the Packers would win. But I, I didn't know was it going to be obscene. Right. You know, I don't know if the kids watch this, man. This game is obscene. <laughs> I, I, great. And uh, now, going into San Francisco, I mean, San Francisco is a very, very good team. But we let off the gas. At the end of the Packer game, we yeah. let off the gas. Or after, I'm sorry, <laughs> the Dallas game. Now, what happens when they de- don't take the foot off the gas? Well, uh, San Francisco is probably going to find out. And it, it's really not going to be pretty for them. But at the end of the game, it's going to be, you know, Jordan. Part two, and for the record, so far, you're still Ram Jam. And I'm jacked about that. Please continue. So yeah, you got, you got Jordan Love with a great big smile. You know, prob- probably going to have Christian Watson right next to him, great big smile. Because, for example, heard from him like once tonight, once. But we're going to hear from him more. There's so many, so many uh, uh, weapons that the uh, Packers have that didn't even come into play to score 48 points. Oh man, this is this is special. <laughs> and and we have a plan that you know. The, with house money, yeah, that's true. But now it's like we're counting cards. I mean, <laughs> I mean, what does this team even have up its sleeve that nobody, even us fans, have not seen? Incredible. So much fun. All right. Get up, brother. Well, yeah, and it's like, you know, okay, 49ers are a, a different class of team. I think that's fair. I think they're a very scary and very dangerous team. There's no doubt. 
Um, but they're not undefeated. In fact, they've lost two of their last three games. One of them to the Rams, they lost. Again, I know I, I get the whole situation, but they lost 33-19 to the Baltimore Ravens. And then the, the game that they won in between was to Washington. So I'm not going to do the same thing where I sit here and pretend they haven't beat any good teams, although I'm, I'm looking for one and I'm struggling to find one. They beat Dallas week five, 42 to 10. There you go. Um, that was basically the one. Um, but at the same time, look at the 49ers and how good they are, right? That's a very real thing. Now look at Dallas and how good they were. It's a, it's a step down. Now look at the fact that the Packers scored 50 points on Dallas and tell me that they're not able to beat the 49ers. Tell me that. They scored 27 points against Washington and 19 against Baltimore. And Baltimore scored 33 against them. Right? I mean, their, their defense is solid, but they've given up 30 points twice. And I genuinely believe this is probably the top offense in football right now, the way that they're playing. I mean, it is the most unstoppable offense We've seen in a while, and, and, and I'm talking NFL-wide, not just like Green Bay Packers-wide. I'll, I'll say the same thing I said about Dallas. I, I don't really care if you think the 49ers are better and are going to win the game. I mean, that's perfectly fine. But if you're saying they don't have a chance, you're just wrong, and you're just refusing to look with your own freaking eyes what's happening right now. And I have, I have barely scratched the surface, but in the just just in the first first five seconds of the, I'm collecting a bunch of videos so I can I can have some fun in the podcast. But like, there's the uh, where is it? Rich Eisen. Um, I got that video queued up. I've I've seen less than a second worth. It's not even at the one second mark. The the first of all, the video is called "Wow!" All caps, three exclamation points, and then it's Rich Eisen reacts to Packers boat racing the Cowboys in the wild card showdown. And the video starts with him pulling his glasses off his face, which for dramatic effect, apparently. I mean, I don't know why you wait for the camera to start and then you rip your glasses off, but pulls the glasses off his face and just says, wow. So if you're, if you're just looking, if you're choosing to accept what your eyes are showing you, there's no doubt that, um, oh man, I think he, I think he told me my name, his name in the third call. (laughs) I'm reading ahead a little bit. But you can't look with your own eyes at what's happening and say this team is incapable of beating the 49ers because that's not true. Now, it might be hard for the defense to stop their offense. And their defense is very talented. There's no doubt about it. But this is this is just setting up to be a good game. And that's it. Hey, I introduced myself. This is Big E calling in. I was a first-time caller, of course. And uh, it's calling from, uh, from Minneapolis, from uh, enemy territory. All right. Surrounded by all kinds of people who... Are sad. <laughs> <laughs> go pad, go, brother. All right, so we got his name. It's Biggie from Minneapolis. I don't mind that. That's that's probably a better name than Ram Jam, anyways. But it would have been a funny nickname. Um, I tell you what, there, I, I, I don't know how many I played. I might have played all of them on uh, today's show already. But there's a lot of Viking shows that are out there. Like, bro, what the what is going on? Like, this is bull crap. Like, I don't expect Lions fans to be talking about it. Because they're still in the playoffs, like they're they're jacked up up about their own win. They're excited about the you know. First of all, they're probably saying the 49ers are going to smoke the Packers, so it does. So you know, I, I don't expect them to say much about it. But Bears and Vikings fans, I mean, you can pretend you got like, oh, we're we're busy over here in Chicago uh, trying to figure out this whole offensive coordinator thing, and we got a lot of work to do figuring out if we should keep Justin Fields or not. You know, we, we got, we're kind of busy. Pay attention. Bro, you watched every snap of that game, and you know it. You saw every single throw. You saw it, and you freaking know you did. So I am excited because, I mean, I don't know. I, I mean, this this is impossible, <laughs> what we're watching right now. I don't know what else to say. It's impossible. Aloha, Ryan Schlitt. First time call, long time listener. What's First time uh, calling in after the uh, Packers game. Holy A. That <laughs> was one for the winners. Uh, can I just say, Mike McCarthy, there's a reason we got rid of him. This was glorious. He loves special sauce. Dave 3 MVP. First, don't say it. Go Pack, go. Yeah, that's, that's exactly. I'm, I'm, Long pauses and then just I, there are no words. That's essentially what it is. I, I don't I don't know. 
Hey, Ryan, by the way, my uh, my girlfriend wanted me to tell you that uh, even if we got into a fight tonight, she'd still be happy for me because the Packers won. Say hi, Ryan. Hi. Good night. Well, good night to both of you. I'm hoping there's no fighting going on tonight, but it's good to have the support. <laughs> even if we get into it's, it's such a interesting way to preface that I'm happy for you. Honey, guess what? I got a promotion. Wow. You know what? Even if we get into a brutal fight tonight, I'm proud of you. <laughs> I I don't know, man. I have a feeling she's expecting one because you did something wrong. I'm not sure. Just say you're sorry. Don't talk and wait for it to blow over. Okay, there you go. But yeah, man. Um, Does suck for Mike McCarthy. It looks like he's probably going to be on the outs. Uh, it sounds like that was kind of in the works already. And then, as I said, when you have the owner of the team say that that was the most embarrassing playoff loss that he can remember in his entire um, prehistoric history, there's a good chance that there's going to be a lot of firings. So I don't have a name for you, dude. Another Minnesota caller, though. We got a lot of Minnesota callers. Oh, I got to turn to the robot here. The robot is just not very good at this. I mean, it's not bad. It's just, it's, some of this is over the top. And I mean, I guess it's hard to be specific with your call because we don't have much to work with. But it's all just like, it could apply to anybody that calls in. It's Packer nicknames. For some reason, Victory Vic is just kind of, just kind of hanging there. Touchdown Tony. (laughs) I don't know. First down Frank. I think we're going with Victory Vic, man. Victory Vic. By the way, if you don't want a ridiculous nickname, Remember to let me know who's calling. But uh, Victory Vic, thanks for the call. And we actually have one more first-time caller. So first-time caller, what's going on? Ryan, love you guys, love everything you do. Thank you. Fat Albert with a PH. Well, we came to play. Man, I am telling you, that game was fantastic. The thing I wanted to call and talk about is, you know, you marry a Chicago girl, you end up in the northern suburbs of Chicago, which sure. basically means you're in hell by definition, and right? I lived there my whole life. And I thought a little bit additional laughing at the enemy spirit would be a great pile on to the positivity that we're all experiencing as Packer fans today. So as I turned in the local yes. sports radio, you know, that dorky station where that douchebag didn't want to vote for a rod for the VP a couple of years ago. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, basically they're talking about how the uncertainty gives them a topic to talk about because they have nothing else to talk about. <laughs> uh, and obviously with Justin Fields and everything going on down here, that's the news. It's, it's exactly what I said too. They're going to pretend that they're too busy talking about Justin Fields and whether or not to keep him, which first of all, again, it's stupid. You're not keeping him. And if you do, it's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. But you, you, you guys are, you're starting to convince me because you're talking so much about it and convincing each other so much about it. It feels like it's becoming a big thing. And so I'm like, dude, it's really a big thing. But really, it's just a lot of people saying stupid things in really loud voices over and over again in their little circular nonsense puddle. But yeah, no, you, you don't have that to talk about. You have nothing to talk about. You suck. And I'm like, oh, man, what it must be like to not have a topic. We've got so <laughs> many topics. You want to talk about J-Love, tight ends, wide receiving core, he's coming on. I mean, we, we don't have that problem by a mile, but this was the top of the pile for me. Caller calls in and says, you know, the standard in Chicago, we, we're not just the turd in the punch bowl. <laughs> we craft the entire punch bowl. <laughs> Thought you'd appreciate that. Have a good one, man. Appreciate you. I like how he says that as though it's an assumed thing that there is a turd in a punch bowl. You know that turd in the punch bowl? Yeah, that's us. No. No. I don't think I don't think that's a I don't know that. I don't know about the turd in the punch bowl. Now it's got me self conscious about all those times I've had punch and trying to remember the flavor. Like it was a little frothy. I thought that was like the seven up. I don't know. But um no, I gotta dig into that for sure. Uh like I said, we got a little bit of Vikings content. I've got a video. Which one is it? I hope it's not the one I accidentally closed, or I'm going to have to go back and find it. Um, I think it's Cowboys, but they got like a, a um, just a bunch of live reactions from the Cowboys, so I'm excited to go through that. But we got to do that for everybody, man. Like I said, Lions, I'm sure, are not pouting, but uh, Vikings, Cowboys, Bears, there's going to be lots of crying, and I cannot wait to dig into that.
But uh, you know what we got to do, man. Uh, you gave me nothing to work with. I don't know if you were trying to tell me your name or if you were just doing an impression. But I mean, it's 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 Fat Albert with a PH is is the name we're going with. It's one of my favorite parts of the show is just giving people ridiculous names. So I can so I can say next up we got Fat Albert calling in, <laughs> and then having people embrace the names. I just I dig it. Hopefully hopefully you all can embrace the nonsense names. So we we added. To our Packernet family, Biggie, Victory Vic, and Fat Albert. I love my life. Why don't we take our first break? We'll go back up to the top of the order here. Uh, We've got Snacks calling in Sunday at 6.41 p.m. We'll take a break. If you want to support the podcast, by the way, patreon.com forward slash pack underscore daddy or hit me up on Venmo Packernet podcast. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. Hey, U.S. Cellular customers, I've got good news, so don't hit skip forward just yet. I'm talking about their special customer event, Us Days. What's Us Days? It means exclusive offers just for their customers, just to say thanks, like up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. No, I didn't just misread that. That's up to $1,200 off. They must really like you. Us Days at U.S. Cellular, exclusive offers just for you, just to say thanks. Right now, U.S. Cellular customers get up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. Terms apply. Hey, it's Kaylee Cuoco for Priceline. Ready to go to your happy place for a happy price? Well, why didn't you say so? Just download the Priceline app right now and save up to 60% on hotels. So whether it's Cousin Kevin's Kazoo concert in Kansas City, go Kevin! Or Becky's Bachelorette Bash in Bermuda, you never have to miss a trip ever again. So download the Priceline app today. Your savings are waiting. Go to your happy place for a happy price. Go to your happy price, price line. This episode is brought to you by Pepsi Wild Cherry. Pepsi Wild Cherry is bursting with delicious cherry flavor and a sweet, crisp taste that gives you more to go wild for. Getting wild may look different these days, but whether it's opting for a solo Friday binge watch or a big night out, Everyone can indulge in their wild side with Pepsi Wild Cherry, also available in Zero Sugar. So grab a Pepsi Wild Cherry and get wild. Listen, man, this is an amazing game and everything has been absolutely glorious. But what in God's name are we doing putting the starters back in, running Aaron Jones, who's fragile as all get out, uh, twice, and then throwing the ball on third down, I mean, it's, it's, it's all good, but it's like, really? And defense not being able, I mean, I know that's all reserves, whatever, and I'm, everything about this game is great, so, but a little suspect. That's all. Yeah, I get it. Well, well and, on. <laughs> uh, Matt LaFleur had made some comments about that. I haven't listened to the full uh, clip of it yet, but I know he's made some comments about, like, that was a learning moment. Basically, he pulled the starters too early. Um, and I'm glad that it was such a blowout that you can make those mistakes. You know, we've seen coaches make mistakes uh, that are quote unquote learning moments that, you know, they, they say that after they lose. This was such a blowout that they could make a major personnel blunder by pulling the starters too early. The 40 or the, uh, the Cowboys drive down the field and get a touchdown, and then they're like, shoot, we better put our starters back in. Then the starters who thought they were done for the day go back out. They're a little bit cold. Run, run. And then, you know, it's it's like, well, no, we're going to put our foot on the gas, you know, because that's what we are. We're this aggressive team. And then they don't get a first down and that stops the clock. And now we're in panic mode. And then we maybe put the starters back out there, but Rashawn wasn't out there and it looked like our safeties weren't out there. So I don't exactly know what version of Star Preston was out there. So I don't know if there were injuries or I have no idea exactly what the heck was going on, but then we kind of put our starters back out on defense. It just, it was kind of a mess down the stretch. And the bottom line is I think the lesson that Matt needs to learn is that three minutes is an eternity in football. It just, I mean, there there was a time I remember where the Packers were winning so handily that we'd put in our, our backups in the fourth quarter. That would never happen today. We're up by like 21 points or something like that. An entire quarter? Nope. Absolutely not putting in backups in the fourth quarter. Teams are just way too good at scoring way too fast. <laughs> I mean, that's just not going to happen anymore, especially in the playoffs. Like, I understand trying to prevent injury, and we we, we had a couple guys fall. Uh, McDuffie and Jair went down. Hopefully, they're going to be okay, especially Jair. No offense to McDuffie, I'm just saying. We have linebackers. We, you know, well, whatever. 
number one corner, number three linebacker. All right, just call it what it is. And again, the the only thing that frustrates me about that, I mean, it, it's a little annoying because it's like, oh, we're we're this really good team, and then we make this massive blunder. But you know, again, it's it's a minor thing that it's just like we got to recalibrate a little bit in terms of our. I mean, it's really an analytics question in terms of what, it, how many points do we have? What is the you know situational football type stuff? Um, at what point you put in your backups? And 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 I think a lot of that too had to do with an, a higher expectation from the defense. Did not expect them to drive down in like thirty seconds and get a touchdown because that changes the math. Because at thirty seconds per touchdown, with you know the three and outs burning not very much time that's that's an issue but my my biggest frustration was if we had just waited another drive there's a good point we crack 50 points not that it really matters because the the performance stands on its own it just it's such a you know it's one of those things historic we know now everybody that watched that game knows exactly how dominant it was but it would have been nice you know 10 years from now looking back going dude we hung 50 points on them i mean we're close enough anyways but it's just seeing that five there. I mean, when have the Packers done? I mean, when have the Packers ever done that? I want to look that up. That's one of the things I want to do for tomorrow is kind of look up some stats. But let's just do the one thing here. 24 times in Green Bay Packers history, only 16 times have we scored more points than that. Um, let's see, what is the most recent? 2014, we scored 53 points against Philadelphia. And as far as postseason goes, the only other game was 2011. We beat Atlanta 48 to 21. And let's be honest, that was the Super Bowl run. And more importantly, that was specifically the moment we realized that we were cut out for this. All right? Remember, we beat the Eagles prior to that. And it was like, cool. It was a wild card game. So they were a wild card. We were a wild card. It's not like set up the way that it is today, where everybody is a friggin' wild card, except the number one seed. So it's kind of like the the low end teams. We'll give them a shot to see if they can get in with the real playoff boys. And we barely won the game. I mean, it was it was a the I, I was just looking at it. We were up by five, and the the uh, Eagles are just driving right down the field. Got to like the twenty five ish yard line. Threw a shot in the end zone. Tremont Williams comes out with a pick, and that ended it. So you, I mean, you, you're excited about it, and of course, there's a chance you could win it, but you're not really thinking that way. Then you play the Atlanta Falcons, who are just this unbeatable juggernaut team that hasn't lost at home, similar to Dallas, and you go in there and you hang 48 on them. And suddenly it's like, bro, we, we can do this, right? I'm just, I'm just saying. Daddy! It's that! I got a couple of little ones that want to say something to everybody. Oh, boy. We're going to San Francisco! You bet we are! We march! That's awesome. I love that your whole thing this year has been We March, and it's such an appropriate... I don't, I don't think I realize, I don't know if any of us really realize how appropriate that phrase really is. Hey, hey, Ryan. Hey. Joe the janitor from Connecticut. What's going on? Woo! Big game, buddy, big game. We just uh, pretty much pounded the Cowboys. Um, you know, when we were winning by 30 points, us. I was pretty um, confident, and then uh, when we were, it was up to 18 points, it was like a real nail biter at the end there, you know, especially with our history and onside kicks and um, losing in three minutes. Anyway, just freaking excited, except they got to go play my brother's team, but that's okay. We made it. We won a game. Jordan Love had a perfect passer rating before they put him back in the game, and then he threw an incomplete pass. I'm sure that changed it, but this is unreal, man. I'm just excited. Go, Pat, go. Shalom. Shalom. Yeah, I mean, it's just, you you, you just cannot do better than that. I mean, it, it, and, and again, it's it's not even just that we did it. It's that I, I I don't think it would be fair of us to expect this to just be the norm. Is Is that fair to say? Like, this is a good team, and there's reason to believe that this will be a very good team for a very long time, and that's awesome. But even if Jordan Love is here for 15 more years, do we know for a fact that we're ever going to see a beating like that in the playoffs? Probably at some point in the regular season or whatever. I'm sure there'll be some 40 burgers or whatever. But in the playoffs? And so again, that's why it's like, if, if this is how hot the team is right now, go get it. Go get it. Well, I don't know how to put it eloquently, but 
Did we just the Cowboys? Did we just beat the team that was supposed to stomp us out round one? Damn, man, that so. was an awesome game. So. By the way, absolutely loved the live stream. That was so much fun. You. Um, you get you you have an awesome family, dude. Um, it was nice seeing the Pack Son come in there. <laughs> um, even heard the Pack Mom, Pack Mama come in there a couple times. Yeah. Glad she was the one who kind of started the vegetable <laughs> eating thing. Which, by the way, I'm just gonna say you're welcome because I was debating if I was going to do that 20 bucks for that first broccoli or not, but I was like, you know what? If I do it, it's going to kick this whole snowball it thing did, off. Did it's going to make bit. you a bunch of money and also put you through and, uh, terrible punishment at the same time, yes. which is like, as a longtime fan of yours, it's like, that's, that's exactly what I want. I want you to make money and keep doing the podcast, but I want you to, you know, have, have some rough moments to, sure. uh, to enjoy um, watching that. So awesome game. Um, Love the live stream. Also, Keep, please keep doing the live stream because I think my curse is broken. But here's the thing. I have to watch the game on mute because that's what I did this whole okay. time. All right. Watch the game on mute and I listened to you call the game. Um, you were a little bit behind, but I just kind of like paused my TV and uh, made it so that you were calling the game live for me. And pff, man, I cannot recommend that enough, especially if the game is Troy and Joe. Every, everybody listening right now, mute the game. Pause it and just let it catch up to where Pack Daddy's calling it, and I promise you, you will have the the best experience, a quality quality experience. So, go Pack, go on to the Niners. It's forgot. It's right. I forgot about that. A lot of most people, unless you're watching it on uh, live TV. Yes, thank you for that. Um, you can probably just pause it, so we're we're synced up. I do have to do a better job of actually calling the game. I, I just assume we're all just watching it, but occasionally I'll get someone like, "What's the score?" Like, what? What? Why are you asking me the score? I what do you, you tell me what the score? What are you talking about? Some people, they, I, I don't know if they're, you know, maybe they're driving in their car or something. Um, so they can't see it or they just don't want to pay for it or whatever the situation is. Um, I got to do a better job of, of doing the play by play stuff. But Nate, I appreciate, um, appreciate you jumping in. Appreciate the donations. Appreciate you, uh, trying to improve my health. I, w- I would rather, you know, do something like, slam a drink or I don't know, get punched in the face or anything. Just not vegetables, man. It's so horrible. What's going on? So my firefighter, how you doing? What's up? Hey, I'm just calling because I'm happy that the Jersey Mike broke his curse. Right. That's good. I'm excited we won the game. We did a damn good job. It was ridiculous. Well anyway uh, I've been streaming some voice a little, a little sore, but I mean, I'm just so happy that Jordan Love is our quarterback now. Yeah, I have been so anti, or actually, I was so pro Jordan that I turned anti Jordan because he played so bad, <laughs> and to see him, it looked like he was Aaron Rodgers, like in his prime, and to be his first year, it was just amazing. And I'm excited about it. So anyway, go pack, go. I love all y'all. I love everything. It's just all about the love. So leave it at that. And, ooh, if we go to the Super Bowl, I'm going to be mad because I could have been off. And I signed up to work, so it is what it is, though. But <laughs> anyway, go back, go. Well, yeah, and you and I were kind of on the same page, I think, all the way through. Um, Jordan loves supporters all the way to the end until things started to go south. And it wasn't. You know, it, it was it was more or less just look if this if this is what he is, this isn't good enough. And it kind of became a question, not even necessarily could he possibly do the. Of course, he could possibly do something, but it's becoming increasingly with every game that goes by, less likely that he's going to turn it around. Number one, but then uh, there's also the second question of just regardless of what I think. I mean, uh, what regardless of what I think the Packers should do, there's a question of what will the um the packers do and it just kind of felt like you know as bad as things were starting to get you know i mean th- those entire first halves of games some of those passes man and then you start looking at well e- you know even if you think he probably will get more time what if we have a top 5 pick what if we have a top 3 pick what if we have the number 1 pick you really think they're going to stick with jordan just because maybe you know, so it just kind of, it just, it got frustrating. And some of it was just frustration, you know, seeing the team as bad as it was and having to suffer through these games. Um, and and Jordan being a large portion of that frustration, being just not playing very well. 
Um, oh, well, the point is we were we were on the same page there. But I'll tell you what, let's take our final break. We'll come back and hear from caller number five. Uh, hey, caller number five here. I almost never call, and I didn't today, in the middle of the game. Um, and I'm glad I didn't because I'm going to let everybody else get their calls in about that stuff. I have one thing to say. Why can't we beat San Francisco? Yeah. That team that I just saw, I don't care who they're playing. Why can't we beat San Francisco? Let's go, man. I, I, just can't, I, can't, even, I can't even believe it. I can't even believe it. Right. How did they do this? This is the worst we're ever going to look. This is the worst version of this team. Are you serious? Oh, my. Bring on San Francisco. Who cares? Oh, I'm so happy, man. I hope you're having a good time, too. I'll see you. Yeah, and, and you know how I am. I'm very conservative when it comes to making predictions or just assuming that things that are, are going to stay that way. Um, I'm, I'm very cautious about that. And so, look, I don't know if Jordan's going to get better or worse. I don't know if Christian and Reed and Dobbs are, are going to get better or worse. I don't really know what's going to happen. But it, it's funny because, I mean, <sighs> Jordan is, is obviously very good, but just let's just look at this draft class. I... I, I I, I always just kind of assume, like, okay, for example, let's look at Dontavian Wicks. Dontavian Wicks has been pretty good. The odds that he's going to do what he's been doing this year for the rest of his career, eh, I don't know about that. And then Jaden Reed, it's like, you know, but all of them together, it just feels impossible. And, and I'm in a similar way with you and a lot of other callers where it's like, it's hard to even find the words to say how absurd what we're watching is. I, I don't even know what to look up to, to, to ask the simple question, has, has this ever happened before? It's like, well, what has what ever happened? I don't know. Has this, this thing that's happening, where, it, you know, I mean, the youth, like a, a first-time quarterback and first and second-year players everywhere on this offense, has that has that ever happened before? And again, I wouldn't even know how to look it up, but I, I don't care because I have to assume the answer is no. And so it's it's kind of a question of I, I don't know how real it is, and I also don't know where all the credit goes, and I'm sure it needs to be distributed in a lot of different ways. I think Matt LaFleur deserves a lot of credit. I think Jordan Love deserves a lot of credit. Like I said before, I gave him a lot of the blame before, even when it looked like the wide receivers are messing up. And I think he deserves a lot of the credit for making some of these guys look pretty good. I mean, they got to make the catches. But Jordan has been putting it on, guys. But then there's a, a, a separate question of what happens if I just allow myself to believe? Believe that Wicks really is who he is. That Bo Melton really is who he is. That um, Reed and Musgrave and Kraft, they are all who they appear to be. There's not some major fall off coming. If that's the reality, then what Brian Gutekunst has done, you know, there, there have been moments. You look at... Um, what Schneider did, who I can't stand, but Schneider over those, you know, basically one draft class. And then several years after that, there were a couple draft hits and some free agent acquisitions that he got. But during those Legion of Boom years, you know, getting Russell Wilson in whatever, whatever round it was, third round, fourth round, whatever, I don't know. But then just, it was like every, everybody he drafted that year was just a stud. If Christian Watson really is as good as he appears to be, if, Jaden Reed really is who he appears to be. If Wicks and Melton and and uh, and everybody else, I mean, all the way down to Zach Tom and Rasheed Walker, this will have to go down as one of the better GM performances. I'm, I'm not saying the best, but it's it's up there. And and the funny thing about it too is, is as much as I you know I'm trying to get myself to believe that maybe some of this is real, I've always said you know everybody has their one. You know, every year or two or three or whatever, you, you get that sort of just freak draft class. And so the Packers are going to be due one at some point. But what Gutekunst has done, in particular in the mid to late rounds over the last, in particular, two years, and then you cap that off with the Jordan Love pick, 
and then look at, oh, look, he's got another 11 picks this year. And that's assuming he doesn't do another like double trade back. Oh, which, by the way, last time he traded back and then traded back again. And I believe he turned those two picks into uh, Dontavian Wicks and uh, I think it was Carl Brooks. And that was when he traded back twice and got Jaden Reed. So he traded back twice, got Reed, Wicks, and Brooks. With one pick, he got those three guys. And he did all that because we had a second, second round pick. So we got Musgrave, used the other pick to get those three guys. And, and this is why, by the way, I'm not really worried about the Bears and all their draft capital and everything else. Because as much as luck is a factor and you're bound to hit on some people, especially with early picks, and maybe that one, that one lucky pick is going to be a quarterback. It's entirely possible. I don't know if I've ever seen a GM with a better ability to not only amass mass quantities of picks, but to hit on so many. Because I'm looking at it and I'm going, I think it's mostly just Jordan Love. Like it's Matt LaFleur and it's Jordan Love. Like that's mainly the thing. That's what's going on. But it's hard to deny what we're seeing with, with the receivers. I mean, you look at the PFF grades, which we'll go over tomorrow. I don't remember exactly all of them, but Luke Musgrave was elite. I think Jaden Reed might have been elite. Actually, no, it was uh, Romeo. Now, Romeo's been down, but it's like every single week we've just got these elite players. It just doesn't stop. And even if it is Jordan that's doing it or Matt LaFleur that's doing it, that's making him look elite because he's drawing up these plays. It's funny because they, they kept calling it blown coverages. I mean, kind of, but it's also play design. Matt LaFleur is running these little sneaks. This, these, these, all these little play fakes where guys come sneaking out or leaking out and Dallas just wasn't seeing it. They didn't know what to do. But the point is, does it really matter? Maybe if these guys went to other teams, they wouldn't be nearly as good. But they're here, and they are good. I don't know, man. It's just, I don't, I don't know what's going on because this is not how football works. And maybe next week we go to San Francisco and we get blown out and it, it turns into a narrative of, you know, yeah, Dallas was just kind of frauds or whatever, and the Packers just weren't quite ready or whatever it ends up being. What It doesn't matter. But either way, it's like th- this is just not how it's supposed to go. This is not how football works. You can't just come in your first year and tear everything up. You know what I mean? It's just, it's stupid. Why, Chris from Alabama? What's up? I am here. <laughs> I am here right now. I'm sorry that I waited so late till after the game took off, but I've been calling and getting on all types of social media and talking so much trash. <laughs> Ryan, look, listen, listen. I'm listening. We beat the dog doo doo out of them. <laughs> I don't care. They scored 20, 32 points. Two of them touchdown was garbage touchdown they had to have. We playing all soft and all that shit. That's, it's all, all that with no matter. We beat the dog doo doo out of the Dallas Cowboys. We dominated this game. Yeah. The Jersey Mike curse is dead. It's <laughs> over. It's dead. Buried. Six feet deep into the ground. It's over. Ain't no curse. What curse? <laughs> Did someone say something about a curse? There's no curse. Oh, I must have, I must have misunderstood. Look, they, they showing it in the locker room right now, baby. This team, this young team. Oh my goodness. We very well might go to San Francisco and get dusted. I don't care. We beat the Dallas Cowboys, and we dominated. We on, we not only beat them, we dominated them. This is the best Sunday in a long, long, long time, and I'm loving every minute of it, and I'm going to talk so much trash to everyone that's a Dallas Cowboy fan <laughs> because we eat the dog through the out of them. Go, Pat, go. I see you in the Bay next week. Let's go. Yeah, and, and I mean, you know, going all the way back to the house money thing, there really is still an element of nothing can hurt us, man, because, I mean... I mean, it's, it's, again, it's going to hurt more because now you're starting to believe we can win a Super Bowl, right? So that, that part of it's going to sting if the Packers did lose. Hypothetical, we're talking here. Um, but just think how much better everything got as far as the legend of Jordan Love and, you know, off-season power rankings. You think the Packers aren't going to be near the top? I mean, they're going to be above Dallas. <laughs> so what's the ranking going to be? 
it's going to be what the 49ers and Baltimore probably we'll see what happens in the Super Bowl well what you know it, it maybe Buffalo we'll see if they can continue I don't even know I'm watching them right now struggle against Pittsburgh the number seven seed I thought it was going to be a blowout and um, right now it's 21 10 probably still going to be a blowout but um, it ain't nearly as much of a blowout as the Packers did against the Dallas Cowboys what Miami I don't think so Kansas City, we beat them before we were even really getting smoking here. Who? Detroit? No. Detroit's not going to be ahead of Green Bay. Only chance of that is if they win next week and beat the 49ers and end up going to the Super Bowl. Because then, okay, fine. Especially if you win the Super Bowl. But that's not, not going to freaking happen. So, I mean, th- this, this team... It feels so stupid to even say it, but I mean, th- th- this is going to be... A powerhouse team for a very, 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 very long time. And Jordan Love will be considered one of the top quarterbacks in the NFL for a very, 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 very long time. And that's freaking crazy. And I, I'm I'm to the point now where even I'm sitting here going, come on, man, this is a little messed up. Like, let's I'm happy, but this is a little unfair. Like this is some kind of a glitch in the matrix or something. Um I I apologize, I guess, to to Bears fans. I fully acknowledge you need to talk about the refs cheating. Dude, that's nothing. <laughs> look at what's going on with the uh look what's going on with the, the the quarterback situation. Talk about cheating. I don't know who's to blame for that, but I mean that's that's just straight up unfair. Hey Ryan. Uh pass manager Jim again. What's up? The only thing better than this, uh after a pack of win is to watch the Detroit Lions turn into the balls that they actually are. So, go Rams. Let's go. Wish I had a better, like, bleep button thing. The little the, the mute takes a little second. He he called them frauds is what it was. Um, unfortunately, unfortunately, they did go on to win the game. Um, I mean, very small part of me is happy for them. But it's kind of like, okay, you, you, you got to the – you won the division – you got to the playoffs, and you won a playoff game. You, you basically checked all the boxes except Super Bowl, and we're not even going to have that conversation. You are a franchise that has never won the Super Bowl. That's funny, and that's never going to change, right? That's just how it goes, you know? I'm sorry. You, you, It's just not in the cards, like ever. That meteor is going to come down and wipe us out before you're ever going to get there. So unless that's coming down to earth then I'm sorry, it's just not in the cards this year or ever because you're, it's just it's never going to happen. Uh, <laughs> hey, what's up? It's Kyle from Madison, up, man? dude. <laughs> oh, how about them cowboys? <laughs> <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Did we just boat? No, we did. We just boat raced the freaking Cowboys at home to end their 16-game unbeaten streak. Correct. <laughs> Not only that, but on a $20 bet, I just won 700 bucks, taking the over on one of those multiplayer Dang. Um, parlays. I had, like, Love over Jones over Wicks for a TD. I think the only Cowboy I had was Cooks to get five receptions. He got six. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> was, wow, dude. <laughs> greatest day. Greatest day ever. <laughs> what do... Uh, please, help me with some words. They're not making it from my brain to my mouth currently. Oh, thank you. I'll have to call back like 45 times this week to try to put into words exactly what I just witnessed. Pretty sure our favorite quarterback was dropping dimes all over the freaking field, dude. God, is this dude cool or what? He make he, you just look at Prescott. I know Prescott's final numbers are going to be whatever. But, I mean, and it got a little nervous at the end there, but I suppose, you know, it ended up working how it should have worked. Just milk the clock, and, and I'm sure we all had our hearts in our throats for a second there, um, especially when they had to put the starters back out. But, okay, okay, but whatever. Prescott's numbers are whack because of that but love man made Prescott look like if you had a guess if you landed 
on earth for the first day and somehow still knew the rules of the NFL and watched this game, you would think Prescott was the quarterback starting his first playoff game. Yeah. And not the guy in the green shirt who looked cool and collected and didn't put any balls in danger and was on the freaking money on, I mean, I don't even know what his final stat line is, to be honest. I just know it was over <laughs> whatever I bet. But, I mean, was there more than two passes that were off? I don't even know. I mean, well, what a freaking game. And Aaron Jones, I'm sorry, dude needs to be back next year. Yeah. Even just on principle. Right. Just on principle, dude needs to be back next year. I didn't see what the Alexander injury was. I sure hope he's back. But, dude, we beat the Woo! Let's go, Packers! Well, it looks like you found your words. You're doing better than me. I'm still I'm still having a hard time. Like my brain has some semblance of an idea of what I'm trying to say, and I just can't say it because it, it, it just is not computing with me. Um absolute insanity. I agree about Aaron Jones. You know, there was a clip about Aaron Jones, and you had Rashawn Gary kind of hyping him up beforehand. And then at the end you had Jaden Reed talking to him. And um Basically, was talking about like the the reason he plays as hard as he does is because of Aaron Jones, and um, I think somebody commented and said that you know Gutekunst made Gutekunst or Lafleur I don't remember but made a comment about he is the heart and soul of the team and that's that's worth paying. You don't want to pay a running back, fine, but you're going to pay somebody um, regardless of position that that is your heart and soul. I mean, when you got guys who are putting in work. Uh, just because of of this person, you know, they're working as hard as they are, they're playing as hard as they are, they're blocking as hard as they are, because they want Aaron Jones to get a touchdown. You know, they want Aaron Jones to succeed. They're playing for him, you know, almost like a, a big brother or a father figure. They they want him to be proud of him and everything else. Um, you pay that guy because it's it's worth it a hundred percent. And that's why I've said before, whatever. Whatever price Aaron Jones is worth, the Packers should be willing to pay that. That's that's the bottom line. I mean, it's it's just uh, if there's a team out there willing to pay it, the Packers should be willing to pay it because whatever he's worth to another team, he's worth a heck of a lot more than that to the Green Bay Packers for what he does for the locker room and everything else. But anyways, I got to get out of here. Uh, I got to do the uh, my little spiel with Matt Ramage and then... Um, We've got to record tomorrow's podcast. So you guys have a good rest of your day. I will talk to you tomorrow. Have a good one. Bye-bye.